creepy Watson, haunted trees, a curious question mark box, and what is this chilling message doing in a kid's game? All of this and more on Missing Number. They say it's the quiet ones you need to watch out for, and that's certainly the case in Sherlock Holmes' nemesis. In the 2007 mystery game, you play as the famed Sherlock Holmes, who has his loyal sidekick, Dr. Watson, always by his side. Literally, he's always there, just watching, waiting, lurking. The game's developers, Frogwares, didn't bother adding any walking animation or pathfinding to Watson. As such, he just instantly spawns right behind the player every time they turn around. Watson even does this in other Sherlock games as well. Frogwares presumably wanted to ensure that Watson was always following the player, so to prevent him from possibly getting stuck somewhere, Frogwares decided to have him teleport instead of walk. It's also possible that Frogwares just didn't have time to implement a walking animation. But whatever the case, the result is unintentionally and amusingly creepy. In fact, this idiosyncrasy is colloquially known as Creepy Watson. Word about this even spread to Frogwares, who ended up making an easter egg and April Fool's video about it. Interestingly, Slender Man and Slender, the eight pages, was allegedly inspired by Creepy Watson. Both characters don't have walking animations, and they seem to have the same teleporting algorithm. Meet Mr. Huggles. This teddy bear makes the perfect gift for toddlers, and in this 2007 Nickelodeon title, a bevy of these pink toys can be found in the game along with their toy packaging boxes. The front of the box is cute and colorful, as it's graced with the name of Mr. Huggles, along with an image of the bear's grinning face. If you take control of the camera, which can be done using an emulator, you can also see the side of the box, which has a cute little message that reads, I'll hug you and kill you. You'll never sleep again. I'll kill your parents. These teddy bears are actually evil killing machines created by a nefarious professor. Throughout the game, you have to fight numerous huggles who wield deadly weapons like hammers and shovels. Considering the game's story, it makes sense why this message would be in the game. However, even when taking into account the game's context, it's still a shocking, excessive, and extreme thing to put in a kid's game, a Nickelodeon kid's game that was apparently licensed by Nintendo. Most likely Nintendo and Nickelodeon, whose brand images are predicated on being family-friendly, didn't know about this chilling message. The only way to really see the text is to take control of the camera and zoom in on the box, which can't be done in the game by normal means. There's a big mystery in Perfect Dark, and for years, it's left people with a giant question mark above their heads. In the warehouse multiplayer map, you can crouch through a ventilation duct, which will lead into a larger area with multiple passageways. However, if you stay in this room and look up, you'll see a curious thing. A grate with a question mark on it, and above the grate is an ammo box. It can't be reached, nor can it be picked up, but if you look at the box using the Farsight Gun's X-ray ability, you can see that there's nothing inside the box, but you can clearly see the giant conspicuous question mark. So the question is, just why is there an unreachable question mark box? According to IGN's Wiki Guide of Perfect Dark, this is an easter egg referencing Super Mario's question mark block. It may have also originally been the spawning location of a sixth weapon, since the map that the box is in is apparently the only map that contains just five weapons instead of six. Another map, called Sewers, also contains more mysterious ammo boxes as well. Two can be seen underneath the grate floating in sewage, but they can't be reached. Even if you use a no-clip cheat, the boxes can't be picked up.
and the tunnels near the crate don't lead anywhere. And then there's this ammo box lying on a grate above a hallway that has a ladder leading up to it, but strangely, the ladder can't be reached or climbed, and using a no-clip cheat to reach the box doesn't reveal anything special. It's possible that all of this is just unfinished content. Perhaps players were supposed to be able to pick up the ammo crates, but the game's developer, Rare, decided against it, and so the ammo boxes and ladder were just left in the game with no real purpose. Bioshock is a creepy game, but there was one point in the game that really creeped me out in an unexpected and subtle way. After fighting an intense action-packed battle against the Big Daddy, I stumbled upon a flight of stairs that led down somewhere. I didn't know where it led, but I nervously went down anyway, and when I turned the corner, I saw this. A liminal space. This room sent shivers down my spine. Up until this point, I was used to having to kill all sorts of crazy enemies everywhere I went, but as soon as I entered this room, it was unusually and eerily quiet. It was like walking into a large abandoned building that had stale air, but you had the feeling like someone was still in the building, watching you. As I nervously made my way to the other side of the room, I discovered items that I could pick up. I suspected that once I acquired these items, something would surely jump out and attack me. But to my surprise, nothing happened. I was relieved, but I couldn't help but wonder, why have a room this big and empty, only for it to contain just a few items and no enemies? As I was about to exit the room, I realized that I had the game's music muted the entire time. When I turned it back on, suspenseful music started playing to my bewilderment since nothing was in this room. Nothing was happening. So why was there music being played as if I was fighting a boss? Out of all the rooms in Bioshock, I found this room to be the strangest, creepiest one. Speedrunning an RPG in one sitting seems like a challenging undertaking, considering just how long RPGs tend to be. With hours and hours of content to get through, it makes you wonder just what speedrunners do if they have to take a bathroom break. In Final Fantasy XIII, which can take anywhere from 4 to 40 hours to speedrun, there's literally just one moment in the entire game that lets players go to the bathroom. According to video game collector Pete Dorr, there's an unskippable cutscene near the end of Final Fantasy XIII, and it's here where players have less than 40 seconds to sprint to and from the bathroom. Here's the cutscene, which happens during Chapter 11 in Taijin's Tower. Are you ready to see the one and only pee break that you have? It's coming up right here. There are no breaks in Final Fantasy XIII except for... This right here, this elevator ride. So the second that I confirm second tier, this is how long you have to go pee before you have to come back to the game. You actually get like an extra second or so out of the 360 version because of the slightly longer loading. So that's a plus. So when you see people speedrun this game, they will use this cutscene to quickly run and sprint to the bathroom. It's about 36 seconds. And that's it, there's your break. Maybe it's even less than that. The cutscene actually lasts 28 seconds to be more precise. So in other words... Run, Forrest, run! Walking into a dark forest will creep out anyone, especially if it's the living forest. In the Mortal Kombat series, the Living Forest is filled with sentient, flesh-eating trees that bear the faces of tortured souls. They were once unsuspecting travelers who ended up getting consumed by the trees, and in turn, became the trees themselves. 
Shao Kahn knows all this too well, as his formidable soldiers even fell victim to the Deadly Forest. The Living Forest first appeared in Mortal Kombat 2, and has since then appeared in at least 8 additional Mortal Kombat games. There was a rumor that in the second game, the Living Forest had a stage fatality where one of the trees could eat a defeated opponent. While this turned out to be false, man-eating trees would eventually be featured in games like Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks and Mortal Kombat 2011. Interestingly, the faces of the trees are actually based on Mortal Kombat's co-creator, Ed Boon. What's more, corpses ensnared by the foliage can be seen as well. In particular, there's this poor villager. His name is Alma, and only the game's background artist, Tony Gosky, knows his true history. That's according to Mortal Kombat's co-creator, John Tobias, who is probably being semi-cheeky. The Ace Attorney series has a thing with penises. In Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Justice for All, phallic food can be seen on a table in Viola Hall in Episode 4. It's only visible in the Game Boy Advance version of the game. It was edited out in the DS version. Meanwhile, in Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations, another phallic object can be seen in a food-themed park called Vitamin Square. Unlike in Viola Hall, this apparently wasn't edited out, 